Alright, hey guys, I got my list on hand here of some games that I wanted to talk about from this year's E3 2011. Now granted, this list is not every single game that I'm looking forward to. It's sort of a list that I just put together of some games that I felt might have went under the radar and unnoticed because of all the high-profile releases. And there are some really high-profile games on here that I'm really looking forward to as well. So I got a fairly large list here. Um, I just want to say, though, that there weren't a lot of surprises at this year's E3, so this list, a lot of the games we already knew were coming, but I just want to talk about them because there was probably, you know, some new trailer, some new gameplay that was showing off, and there's some new uh, surprises in here as well, but not too many. Got a large list here, so I'm just going to go through them fairly quickly um, in no particular order, but the first game on my list is actually probably my most anticipated game for this year, and that is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. I The new gameplay that they showed off, it looks phenomenal. The battles versus the dragons and the random scripting of the dragons and the dungeon gameplay that they showed off with the waterfalls and the caves, the enemies, it looks phenomenal. I cannot wait to lose myself in this game. I plan on spending at least 100 plus hours. I was a huge, huge fan of Oblivion, one of my favorite games of all time, as well as a very big fan of Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowinds, and needless to say, I'm super excited for Skyrim. Next, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. I have to admit, guys, I was actually kind of blown away by the gameplay they showed. I didn't expect to be this excited for Modern Warfare, for Modern Warfare 3, because I'm actually starting to wear thin a little on the Call of Duty series. But man, the gameplay they showed in the ocean with the ships and the helicopters and the planes, you know, out in combat, in the sinking ship, it looked phenomenal, especially the stuff outside um, when everything was going on in the water. It Everything is scripted, but... Damn, does it look fun. I can't wait to play the single player in that. SSX, I'm really impressed with where they're going with with SSX. Um, I think they dropped the Deadly Descent subtitle, which I think was a good idea. But what I'm really most interested in is it looks really good. They're going to use satellite technology to basically map, map all the mountains in the world that you can snowboard on and put those into the game. So definitely looking forward to SSX coming out on PS3 and 360. And next is Uncharted 3, the sequel to my 2009 Game of the Year, so needless to say, I'm quite excited for this one. The new gameplay they showed off looked really good. Definitely a change of pace from Uncharted 2, um, so I'm looking forward to the new environments that, gonna, that they're going to be introducing. They're also focusing a lot more on online play, so I'm hoping that single player doesn't get, you know, dampered in any way, but I really do have faith in them that Uncharted 3 will turn out to be possibly the Game of the Year for 2011. But don't hold me to that, because it's got some good competition this year. Next is a game that I do not want you guys to pass up. Google this name right now on YouTube. The name of the game is Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. If you own an Xbox 360 and you have Xbox Live, this is coming out on Xbox Live Marketplace. It's actually one of my most anticipated games from this year uh, that I've seen so far. It's sort of like a twin-stick shooter in the style of Metroidvania. Um, so you got like a world to explore, it's not linear, it has a really unique look to it. The style kind of reminds me a bit of Limbo, but only with color. Definitely check it out if you're a fan of Metroid, Castlevania games, or Twin Stick Shooters. That's Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet. Definitely check that one out. Next is Nano Assault. This is a sequel to the Nano Stray series on the DS, and this is coming out on the 3DS. The Nano Stray series is actually a little hidden gem uh, favorite series of mine on the DS. It's a shoot them up, um, but this one is taking a change of pace for the series, because it's on the 3DS, they're gonna, it looks like they're mapping the game world in a 3D globe, so sort of like Super Stardust, which should have a really nice 3D effect on the 3DS, um, it is a change of pace though from the regular top-down shooters that were on the DS. Dark Souls, once again, a sequel to one of my favorite games once again from 2009, which was Demon Souls. They finally showed off some new gameplay for it, and it looks phenomenal. It looks punishing as ever. The, the combat versus the boar that they had in the game looked pretty brutal in terms of trying to kill that thing. Demon, uh, Dark Souls is really shaping up to be a game to look out for, especially if you're a fan of RPGs. Um, next on the list is Starhawk. This is, once again, a sequel to another PS3 game. Um, well, semi-sequel, I guess you could say, spiritual. And that is Starhawk, the sequel to Warhawk on the PS3, an early online game for the PS3. I'm sure those a lot of you remember that came bundled with a Bluetooth headset. What looks great about this one, though, is the new vehicles, especially the transforming uh, planes. It's sort of like a transformer thing going on. I don't know. It looks pretty interesting based on the gameplay I've seen. It looks fun. Definitely check it out if you're a fan of online third-person shooters. Tomb Raider, the gameplay they showed off for Tomb Raider... 
it looked really good. It is very scripted. It seems um, a little handholdy. I'm not really a fan of games that sort of outline things for you. So while the gameplay looked really, really awesome and it, it, it was very scripted in terms of, you know, there was a lot of quick button stuff going on, but they added an element where you can highlight things in the game world that you have to use to advance through it. So it'll highlight boxes and torches and lifts that you have to use. But wasn't the point of Tomb Raider games always the sense of discovering stuff around your environment and not having it handhold you? If you remember back to the old Tomb Raiders on PlayStation 1, you had to do some pretty good exploring in those games to find where you needed to go. So I'm really interested to see how much this might ruin or help the experience. So I'm really interested to see how this handholding element in the new Tomb Raider is going to play out, but it looks really good. Next is From Dust. This is a new game from the creator of Out of This World, a classic game. And this is his new creation. It's a god simulator game where you're really manipulating the environments. So it's sort of like a puzzle game mixed with simulator and think like black and white. It's a really interesting concept where you can kind of morph the landscape to um, help and move along the civilization on the land that you're trying to help out. Looks really good. Definitely interested in seeing how this comes out. This is coming out on the Play PlayStation Network and the PC. Uh, next is Rayman Origins, which Ubisoft opened in their press conference with a long gameplay demo. And there were so many people complaining, like, Ubisoft, get this 10-minute demo of Rayman's off. And I was like, hell, bring on more Rayman, because what I saw of Rayman Origins was actually one of the best games I saw at the show. Looks phenomenal, looks like a very solid platformer, very fast-paced. The online, or I shouldn't say the online, but the multiplayer in it looks super, super fun. Uh, it looks challenging as well, but this is definitely one of the best-looking platformers I've seen in a very long time. Uh, Kirby Wii, they surprisingly didn't show this off at the Nintendo press conference, but there is a new Kirby game coming out. We did know about this, but they showed us some new gameplay. It's sort of in the vein of New Super Mario Bros. Wii, only in Kirby style. It allows up, allows up to four players co-op, and it does have, of course, the single-player campaign, look, which looks phenomenal. This, this is the Kirby game that should have... No offense to Epic Yarn, it was an excellent game, but this is the Kirby game that we've all been waiting for. This is true Kirby with power-ups, it's classic Kirby. Kirby's Epic Yarn originally did not start as a Kirby game. This, built from the ground up as Kirby. I can't wait for it. Uh, Rhythm Heaven. This is one of my most anticipated titles coming out for the Wii. I'm a huge, huge fan of Rhythm Heaven on the DS. It's one of the most fun games I've played on that system. So the fact that a sequel is coming out on the Wii, I'm super excited. If you're not familiar with the Rhythm Heaven series, it originated in Japan on the Game Boy Advance, made its way to the DS, and we got the port of the DS version. It's a really fun rhythm game, uh, music rhythm game, with very challenging uh, beats that are very... It's not like overly complex songs, it's just a very simple beat for the most part to the songs, and you're sliding and you're tapping and all kinds of stuff with the touch bed to the beats of the song. So I'm really, really excited to play it on the Wii. Kirby Mass Attack on the DS. This is a new reveal as well, I believe. Kind of in the vein of Kirby's Canvas Curse, it's taking a bit of a twist to the Kirby series in that you control a group of Kirbys with the touchscreen. So it's not going to be a classic, you know, platformer Kirby game. It's going to be touchscreen based and you control a ton of Kirbys at once. It looks really hectic and it looks really different. It looks really fun as well. So definitely looking forward to that. A nice surprise uh, at this year's E3 from Nintendo, and that is the announcement of Luigi's Mansion 2. In the back of my mind, I was like, man, wouldn't it be cool if there was a sequel to Luigi's Mansion? I never thought Nintendo would really do it because, I don't know, there was just something about Luigi's Mansion that I never thought they'd really bring the series back, but they did. I'm a huge, huge fan of Luigi's Mansion on the, on the GameCube. Um, possibly, you know, that would probably be my top five games without a doubt on the GameCube. So I'm, needless to say, I'm really excited for the 3DS version. My only complaint though is it seems to be a bit faster paced, a little arcadey. It doesn't quite match the style of the original to me from what I've seen in the gameplay. It looks, it looks different. There's something different about it. There seems to be more ghosts that are, I don't know, not quite hidden as well, I should say. I don't know. It's hard for me to say based on the trailer they showed, but I'm still definitely looking forward to it. Next is Mario Kart 3D. We all knew it was coming, but it looks really good. Um, I watched the 3D trailer. By the way, all these 3DS games that Nintendo showed off, if you have a 3DS, you can download 3D trailers on your 3DS and check them out in 3D, which is an awesome idea by Nintendo, to see these games in 3D before you buy them, and they all look phenomenal. Mario Kart 3D, you can drive underwater, you can hand glide, you know, you can glide in the air with a, a glider. Who the heck cares? It's Mario Kart. Everybody's going to buy it. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Kid Icarus Uprising. I'm mentioning this again because they introduced multiplayer. Now, whether the multiplayer is online or local, I'm not quite sure on that. 
Needless to say, though, let's hope it's online. Whoever thought that multiplayer would come to this Kid Icarus game? It's shaping up to be a really great looking game, though. It really has evolved into sort of like a Sin and Punishment style game, though, um, which is definitely not a bad thing. So, I, I don't know, I'm just definitely looking forward to trying out the multiplayer. Hopefully, it's online. Nintendo, do the right thing, please, online. Welcome to 2011. Alright, next is Star Fox 3D. Showed off some new gameplay. We all know what to expect from this game because we've, I'm hoping we've all played it before if we have an N64. Um, I don't know if they're introducing online with this either, but the multiplayer is going to be intact. So this time they're going to have uh, a video of your face so you can see your opponent's faces as you're playing against them. In my opinion though, I don't think something like that would make it online because I'm sure Nintendo's kind of scared with what might show up on those videos. Really excited for Star Fox 3D, however. Mario, Super Mario 3D for the 3DS. I'm kind of half and half on this one, guys. I was hoping for a Super Mario 64 kind of game. What I got was a blend of 3D and 2D, which isn't a bad thing. It, it's still not what I want from a new 3D Mario game, though. It seems a little slower paced, though, from what I've seen. I'm still really excited for it, don't get me wrong, but I'm still holding out that one of these days, maybe on the Wii U, we will see sort of like an open world or Super Mario 64 style 3D Mario game again, please. However, you're getting back to the game, Super Mario 3D, uh, what they showed off looked pretty impressive. The Tanuki suit is making a return. It seems to be going back to the classic style of Super Mario Brothers. You know, instead of collecting stars, you seem to be just getting to the end of the level and getting on top of the flagpole. So definitely interested to see where this one goes, but I'm still holding out, guys. Super Mario 64, the sequel, maybe one day. Uh, Zone of the Enders HD, this was announced at Konami's pre-E3 briefing. I'm really, I'm super excited for this because I'm a huge fan of the original Zone of the Enders. I think I was one of the few people that bought that game for Zone of the Enders instead of the Metal Gear Solid 2 demo. Um, but the greatest thing is, I was actually planning on going back and restarting that game soon. Now I gotta hold off, unfortunately, to play the remake, so gotta hold out a little bit longer. Um, it's also including the second Zone of the Enders, which I've never played before, and I've heard that's even better than the first. So, definitely looking forward to that collection. Bioshock Infinite, what can I say, this game looks really good. It's probably one of the best looking games at this year's E3. The environment, I'm, I totally want to be there. I want to be up in the sky, skydiving, not in scripted events. You can just start skydiving and grab onto the rails with your weapon and just go all around this place. I can't wait to see what the story is like. I can't wait to see what the environment is like. Bioshock really reinvented the first person shooters with its sense of environmental and storytelling and set pieces. So I can't wait to see where they go with Bioshock Infinite. And lastly, a game that I don't want any of you to pass up, which is coming out on the PSN. It is called Journey. They showed off some more gameplay. This is a very mysterious kind of free-flowing, relaxing game from the creators of one of my favorite PS3 games, Flower. So if you're into sort of surreal, obscure, relaxing, kind of just play them at your own pace kind of games, with this is going to have online play. That's very, it's got a little bit of Demon Souls online in there, where you kind of pair up with people online, and I don't think they let you communicate. I don't think you could type or talk to the people you meet up with um, in this game. You're kind of just in a desert, and you're trying to get to these towers in the distance. So you have to try and communicate with your partners without any kind of text or voice. It looks really interesting. Check out some gameplay for Journey coming out on the PSN. So there you go, guys. Um, without a doubt, I'm sure I left out some stuff, um, but that's just a list that I put together really fast. I'm really looking forward to the games that are coming out this year. It's going to be a jam-packed year, what can I say? And of course, be sure to stay tuned for my future videos on a lot of these games where I'll let you know what I think about them. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.